Harry S. Truman, the 33rd President of the United States, was a leader who unexpectedly found himself at the helm in one of the most turbulent times in global history. A modest man from Missouri, Truman's rise to the presidency came at a critical moment, right at the tail end of World War II. His decisions, many of which were made under extreme pressure, would not only bring the war to a close, but also lay the groundwork for the Cold War and reshape the world order. Early Life Harry S. Truman was born on May 8, 1884, in the small farming community of Lamar, Missouri. His parents, John Truman and Martha Young Truman, were of modest means, and young Harry grew up in a rural setting, far removed from the bustling political centers. Interestingly, his middle initial S was not an abbreviation for a name. It was a compromise between the names of his grandfathers, Anderson Ship Truman and Solomon Young. Despite his humble beginnings, Truman was a bright student. However, his poor eyesight required him to wear thick glasses, which kept him from pursuing his dream of attending West Point. This setback did not dampen his determination. Instead, it grounded him in the realities of life, teaching him resilience and practicality traits that would later define his presidency. Path to politics. After high school, Truman's life took a practical turn. With no money for college, he worked various jobs, including as a bank clerk and a farmer on his family's 600-ocker property. These years on the farm would prove formative, as they instilled in him a deep understanding of the common American struggles, something that would resonate throughout his political career. Truman's service in World War I was another pivotal chapter. Enlisting in the National Guard, he was sent to France and saw action in several campaigns. His leadership as a captain in an artillery unit earned him respect and built his confidence in handling responsibility and experience that prepared him for future challenges. After the war, Truman married his childhood sweetheart, Bess Wallace, and ventured into business by opening a men's clothing store. Unfortunately, the store failed, a setback that might have discouraged others, but Truman pressed on. He found his true calling in public service, starting with an election as a district judge in Jackson County, Missouri, in 1922, a position more akin to a county administrator. Political rights. With the backing of Kansas City political boss Tom Pendergast, Truman's career gained momentum. He was elected as a U.S. Senator in 1934, where he became a staunch supporter of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal programs, which aimed to lift the U.S. out of the Great Depression. Truman's commitment to efficiency and integrity, especially in leading the Truman Committee, which investigated and reduced wasteful military spending, earned him national recognition. The Unexpected Presidency In 1944, as Franklin D. Roosevelt sought an unprecedented fourth term, Truman was chosen as his running mate, replacing the more controversial Henry Wallace. Roosevelt's victory in the election seemed to assure continuity, but fate had other plans. On April 12, 1945, just months into his term, Roosevelt died suddenly, thrusting Truman into the presidency. The weight of the world, as Truman himself described, fell on his shoulders. Facing monumental decisions, Truman's early days in office were marked by a series of decisions that would define his legacy. The war in Europe ended with Germany's surrender on May 8, 1945, but the conflict with Japan raged on. Faced with the prospect of a costly invasion of Japan, Truman authorized the use of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. While these bombings led to Japan's surrender on August 14, 1945, they also sparked intense debate about the ethical implications of using such a devastating weapon. The Cold War and Containment Post-war, Truman's presidency was dominated by the emerging Cold War a period of geopolitical tension between the US and the Soviet Union, 
Truman's foreign policy was driven by the idea of containment preventing the spread of communism. The Truman Doctrine, which provided aid to Greece and Turkey to resist communist pressures, was an early example of this policy. This was followed by the Marshall Plan, which aimed to rebuild war-torn Europe, not just out of altruism, but to create strong economies that would resist communist influence. The Korean War and Domestic Challenges In 1950, Truman faced a major test when North Korea, backed by the Soviet Union and China, invaded South Korea. Truman quickly committed US forces to defend South Korea under the United Nations banner. Marking the first military conflict of the Cold War, the war dragged on, leading to a bloody stalemate and diminishing Truman's popularity, yet it established the USS resolve to counter communist expansion. Domestically, Truman struggled with the transition to a peacetime economy, dealing with labor strikes, inflation, and housing shortages. His fair deal, an ambitious social reform agenda, faced significant opposition in Congress, but he succeeded in implementing key initiatives like the Housing Act of 1949 and ending segregation in the military. Legacy and final years. Truman chose not to seek re-election in 1952, paving the way for Dwight Eisenhower's presidency. After leaving office, Truman returned to Independence, Missouri, where he lived out his years as a respected elder statesman. He authored memoirs, supported the creation of the Harry S. Truman Presidential Library, and remained active in public life until his death in 1972 at the age of 88. Harry S. Truman's presidency was marked by some of the most critical decisions of the 20th century. From ending World War II to shaping the early years of the Cold War, his actions had lasting impacts on the global stage. Truman was a man of conviction, unafraid to make tough choices, and his leadership during a period of immense change cemented his place in history as a pivotal figure in the shaping of the modern world.